well, and I've been involved with some interesting coaches as well. So over that period, I think what I've learned is it, it's so important to have a, a, a people-centred approach or player-centred, if you like, development-driven and then competition-ready. So, you, you know, you're, you're, you always know your players or get to know your players, not just on the field, but off the field and what makes them tick and know about their families and, you know, their work-life balance if they are semi-pro for example and then try to develop and put put you know good monitoring good analysis uh, good coaching practices in place so people can see that they're developing you know give them targets give them ideas of what success looks like for the team and and, and what are the key parts they play within that their key roles within that uh, and then make sure that they're ready to play in the competition that they're ready whether it's a rugby world cup or whether it's a um, a Premiership match or a Heineken Cup match, give them an understanding of what that competition is, and, and prepare them and get them ready for it. So, it's 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 people centred, development driven, and competition ready. That's my philosophy. And when I put programs together, or when we put programs together, the coaching staff or the key staff at a, a club or an international team, those are the three real key elements that underpin our planning. Uh, our, our our process and our our operation pro, operational process sorry and then our our review process Chris you know so that that's it in a nutshell really uh, how's that sort of developed over the years any examples of when you did go into into Namibia to kind of begin to understand the culture of of a country that's you know, for, for a lot of us foreign and we just can't even envision what it is like over there um so have you got any uh, any examples in which you know you try to embrace and and immerse yourself within that within that Namibian culture I have a few pints <laughs> 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 the beer right the beer the beer and why you know south africa is well as is france of course and and wales new zealand is famous for this wine, but right, Namibian namibia right namibian brewing is all done under german law um, and there's no additives, no preservatives, right? So you can get absolutely smashed on 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 the sauce one day, but then you can wake up the day after, feel bright as a button because there's no additives or preservatives. So that helped in a way in in lots of conversations. You'd have a few a few beers, right? But in all seriousness, that 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 was actually part of it. But I knew there was a big German influence in, in Namibia. I knew there was a big uh, uh, Afrikaner influence, obviously. So I sort of studied a little bit and spoke to people who'd actually worked in those countries, uh, who I knew. Um, some of them were in a business context. Some of them were in a, in a in a sporting context. So that was the first thing. And then when I went in there, then we, we, we created a... Um, uh, a conference, if you like. So we said, right, what's your what's your uh, understanding of high performance? So they went da 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 da, and I said, okay, this is our understanding of high performance. Okay, fine. So then we had a baseline of thinking: what does Namibian rugby look like? Oh, flair, uh, courage. Fine. Okay, great. That's 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 another thing. You know, what what are you most proud of? Or our country, our flag. Um, our families okay there's some other ideas so we started a, you know we started to create the jigsaw Harrison if you like and then we started then to say right okay well what do you want to do what do you want to do well, we want to qualify for the World Cup and we want to win a game so I said okay great fine okay but what does that, what does that look like to you oh we're going to be motivated and we're going to do this we're going to do that whatever whatever so I said okay fine but motivation only lasts for so long. So, you know, motivation lasts, uh, you know, it's it's momentum before motivation, not not motivation again, momentum, you know, motivation and, and moving forward, give um, direction and moving forward gives you motivation, not waiting for something to motivate you to move forward. If that makes sense. So we started to look at all those different things. What were the standards of um some of the top tier two teams between number 15 and number 20 in the world because in the mid we were number 24 when we started so we, we we started to look then at performance metrics of how teams what teams look like and where we actually were and where the gaps were so we created a gap analysis 
And then we used a traffic light system over four years to close the gaps. So we went from red players to amber players, amber players to uh, green players. So green players were 80% towards the target, amber were 50 plus percent, and red were under 50%. And then we looked at performance metrics of uh, high-speed meters, strength in the gym, power. Then we looked at tackle technique. We looked at basic skills. We looked at um, ability to keep the ball, you know. All that sort of stuff became our sort of strategic and operational plan uh, and our hearts and minds plan in order to move forward to get be competitive in 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 the World Cup in Japan. And the first 30 min 38 minutes against New Zealand, 10-9, was the score, was five years' work, culmination of that work. The second half was a bit more ugly on the scoreboard, by the way, but we gained, we kept the ball for over 12 times. Uh, we set a goal, sorry, to keep the ball for six phases more than six times, and we did that 12 times against the world champions. Uh, because we wanted incremental increases in performance to go into the fourth game against Canada, because they were 23 and we were, uh, sorry, we were 23 and they were 21. And we felt we had a chance to win those that game. We didn't have a, we weren't going to beat Italy, New Zealand and South Africa, but we could get performance increases to give us the confidence to know we could score tries, we can keep the ball, we can stop malls when we went and played against a team we felt we had a chance to beat, you know. Clarity, purpose, direction. You know, it's as, it's as simple as that. It's is having, you know, the clarity about what you're trying to achieve. Um, and that comes to the connection. It's like, like I said, in Namibia, the flag was important to the players, right? So the colours, you know, the colours of the flag were yellow, the sun. So we had sun-up mentality, right? So the, the sun-up, you know, Sunrises and sundowners in Africa, right? Are sensational. They are in many parts of the world. But we always are. Look, sun up, sunrise mentality, heads up, heads up. If the boys were down, he said, just look at the flag, look at the flag, because the sun was 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 there. You know, different colours, you know, green was green for go, you know, we're going towards our target. So it was always very positive things. And then, you know, the fish eagle on the jersey was a real like the three lions in football or the red rose in rugby. That was a real symbol of pride for them, you know, when they put that thing on their chest. So they knew, you know, what the purpose was. They were clear about things. They were clear about the direction because they know what's, they knew what success looked like and they knew where we were now and they knew their part within that. So, you know, it is about clarity, you know, being clear about roles, purpose, direction. Those, those are the, the key things really, Harrison, that you've got to work towards. And, you know, and, and, and you just got to spend time on those things. The technical, tactical bit for me in rugby is easy. You know, it's just, you know, and the physical bit. Anybody can go in the gym and get bigger, faster, stronger. They can do it for a while, but to get them to do it for, you know, the next stage and the next stage or the next while and the next while in order to hit the targets is, is all about getting mentality, the mentality, the mindset right and get in the well growth mindset and you do that by touching their hearts you know, and their heart is hearts and minds then uh, and and those are the key things really clarity purpose and direction and you've got to spend do it time doing that you've got to identify what the key parts of that are so there's there's on the is on the field and there's off the field and it's all about you know people well-being that's how you people centered you know, that's where that comes in really for you. And that's where development driven and that's where competition ready comes in, you know.